Well, today I want to talk about West Nile virus in the in the United States, right? And in, I want to give a hat tip to Contagion Live, the website, uh, for actually pointing out very recently, earlier this week, that uh, it's been nearly 20 years since West Nile virus was first detected in the Western Hemisphere. And now with the arrival of summer, health officials around the U.S. are reporting the first West Nile activity of the 2019 season. And just want to add one little number that we're going to be needing later in the show. In 2018, there were about 2,500 reported cases of West Nile virus in the U.S. Um, a little bit higher than uh, some of the more recent summer seasons. But yeah, so it's been almost to the month, uh, 20 years since West Nile virus was first detected in the U.S. Just a little bit of background on, and a little history on West Nile virus. It was first isolated from a febrile patient from the West Nile district of Northern Uganda, 1937. Now the patient presented in the setting of a large epidemiologic study of yellow fever virus. However, inoculations of the mice with the patient's serum resulted in the isolation of a virus with physical and pathologic properties similar to those of two flaviviruses, St. Louis encephalitis virus and Japanese B encephalitis virus, and sharing immunological relationships with these viruses. Although the index patient presented with fever only, these first studies with the newly discovered virus indicated that pathology primarily involved the central nervous system, suggesting its neurotropic nature. Now, the epidemiology and ecology of West Nile virus was first characterized in detail during several outbreaks in the Mediterranean basin in the early 1950s and 1960s. The first recognized epidemic of West Nile virus occurred in Israel in 1951 in a small town outside of Haffa, where a total of 123 cases with no fatalities occurred among 303 inhabitants and the majority of the cases were in young children. Now during this outbreak, the various clinical features associated with the infection were first described in detail, with the main symptoms being fever, headache, myalgias, anorexia, abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, and some other symptoms. Well, let's move forward uh, several decades and uh, this is Dr. the late Dr. Deborah Esnes. I hope I said her, her, her name right. I apologize if I didn't. And she's the one that sounded the horns uh, concerning West Nile virus in New York City back in 1999. And let's go ahead and take a little bit of that story. Um, Dr. Deborah Esnes, whose suspicions about two Queens Hospital patients suffering, suffering from sudden paralysis led to the discovery of the first outbreak of West Nile virus in the Western Hemisphere. And of course, uh, she passed on in 2015. On August 23, 1999, a Monday, Dr. Esnes, an infectious disease specialist, contacted Marcel Layton, the chief epidemiologist at the New York City Health Department, reporting that two of her patients at Flushing Hospital Medical Center were displaying similar puzzling symptoms. Asnes did something other doctors might not have bothered to do, uh, according to Eleanor Levy and Mark Fischetti, who wrote in the book, The New Killer Diseases, How the Alarming Evolution of Germs Threaten Us All. One of the worst problems with our disease detection system, they added, is that doctors never report cases of strange symptoms either because they are unsure of the disease they are facing, they're ignorant of the reporting requirement, or they simply never get around to it. Deborah Asnes was highly conscientious. Her two, her two male patients, one 60 and the other 75, had high fevers. They had lost control of their arms and legs, seemed disoriented, and registered excess white, white blood cells in the spinal fluid. Initial tests suggested viral encephalitis, 
uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome, meningitis, or even botulism. Dr. Layton urged Dr. Asnes to send blood and spinal fluid samples to the State Health Department's laboratory in Albany for further testing. By Friday, two more cases had developed, and by Sunday, Flushing and other Queens hospitals had identified eight cases. All the patients shared two traits. They lived within a few square miles of one another, and in the evening, they were either avid gardeners or backyard loungers. The Federal Centers for Disease Control and Prevention was enlisted, and on September 3rd, the culprit was identified as St. Louis encephalitis. Now, two hours later, the city began <clears throat> dousing insect breeding grounds with insecticide, generating a separate panic over the potential health danger of aerial spraying. On September 27, 1999, further tests by Dr. Dwayne Gubler, a CDC expert on arboviruses, coupled with earlier suspicious deaths of birds in the Bronx, prompted the federal government to revise its diagnosis to West Nile virus. So, so it all starts with Dr. Deborah Asnes, the late Dr. Asnes. So just a little brief uh, summary on West Nile. It's by far the leading cause of mosquito-borne disease in the continental United States. It's most commonly spread to people uh, via the bite of an infected mosquito. Cases of West Nile virus occur during mosquito season, which typically starts in the summer and continues through the fall. There are no vaccines to prevent or medications to treat West Nile virus in people. Fortunately, most people infected with West Nile do not feel sick. About one in five people who are infected develop fever and other symptoms. And about one out of 150 infected people develop a serious, sometimes fatal illness. Well, let's see what it's been like in the United States. Um, since this discovery and just take a look at uh, this is the cases reported to the CDC by state since 1999 through 2017 and just to take a look at 1999 we can see that New York had 62 cases the only state to report any that first year but things have changed right so if we look at the total since 1999 through 2017 we got over 48,000 uh, West Nile virus cases in humans. Add the, if we go back a few pages, the 2,500 cases reported in 2018, that's more than 50,000 West Nile virus cases uh, reported since in the past 20 odd years. Um, and there are fatalities that come along with West Nile, right? It can, it can be a very serious disease and from 1999 to 2017, there was over 2,100 fatalities, not including the fatalities from last year. So yeah, West Nile virus, a big deal, right? It was, um, it was ranked number three as the um, uh, important, the third most important zoonotic infection in the United States. And then you can see that on a video I did several days ago. Let me go ahead and close it out with what's going on today. Well, through June 25th, there have been 10 West Nile virus cases so far. Six of them were neuroinvasive and one fatality in the state of Arkansas. And it's just the beginning, so I'm sure we're gonna see these numbers climb. Um, if we go back one slide, we can see some of the worst years and 2003 was by far the worst. They had nearly uh, 9,900 cases. And I think that Colorado all, all by itself reported almost 3,000. And if you look at the cumulative totals of the different states, um, the three that are the worst is California with almost 6,600, Colorado with uh, 5,400, and about the same in Texas, about 5,400. Those are the three states that have been hit the hardest since 1999. But anyway, 
I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, got a little bit of information about the uh, uh, genesis of West Nile virus here in the United States. And um, again, I encourage you to comment below, uh, like the video, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe to the page. I appreciate it. And I'll see you next time on the next Infectious Disease News Brief. And don't forget to check us out at the website, OutbreakNewsToday.com, the podcast, Outbreak News Interviews, which can be found on the website, on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, and Spotify, and the Outbreak News This Week radio show, which is aired Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time in the Tampa Bay area on AM 1380 The Biz, or online streaming at 1380thebiz.com. And check out our social media presence, Facebook at Infectious Disease News, and Twitter at BackDman63. Outbreak News TV is a production of The Global Dispatch. Copyright The Global Dispatch Incorporated 2019.